to give us a prayer. Okay, any volunteer to give us a prayer? You put up your hand. Any volunteer? Okay, Joshua. Joshua, 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 Joshua. Yes, Joshua. Good morning, Joshua. Good morning, teacher. I hope you're fine. Yes, I'm very fine. That's very good. Please give us a word of prayer as we kickstart our lesson. Okay. Let's turn ourselves and pray. Dear Lord, Father Almighty, we'd love to thank you for this blessed morning. We pray and believe that each and every concept you are going to learn today is going to be grasped in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there is COVID around Uganda, but we are so grateful that we haven't been affected so much. And dear Heavenly Father, I would love to bless this lesson and bless whoever has prepared it and bless whoever is going to listen to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. A Amen. Thank you so much, Joshua, for that prayer. And um, we pray that he may those prayers be answered. Eh? Okay, so um, dear learners, I want to still welcome you now as we kickstart our lesson. We have a little time left uh, that we have. Now, I want to put across some of these things before we get started. I know they're the usual things. One, uh, make sure you join the Google Classroom. Okay, please make sure you join the Google Classroom if you haven't. Uh, we shall send you a link where you'll be able to access that classroom. Why do you join this classroom? To be able to get the notes and also the assignments. That's the reason why you get to those classes. Uh, two, please, uh, also the link to the WhatsApp group. Uh, it's also there. Please make sure you also join that group. Why are you in this group here is to make sure you get any update, any changes that may come across, okay? In the case we say the lesson is supposed to be this, you will always get them in the WhatsApp group in case there is any change of a lesson or the timetable. Then um, lastly, um, is the, the part of the, U, the, the YouTube channel. Now, as we go through our studies, last time that we were here, we realized we took a lot of time because people were coming in late, uh, other people were not understanding some concepts because of network for one reason or the other. Now, this is why you need to get to this YouTube channel. So I request that if you come in late, if you come in late in a lesson and we have already started, okay? Just pick up from there. Now, when the lesson ends, you go to this YouTube channel and then you'll be able to view all the lessons and then you'll be good to go, okay? So it will be the same thing. Eh? What we've been studying here, we will be able to go through uh, using that WhatsApp group. So, sorry, using the YouTube channel. So we post these videos immediately, the lesson is done. You go and then you review, you review, and then we are good to go. Now, this is to save on our time, okay? Because if everyone comes in late, you keep on repeating, keep on repeating, and yet we are moving on the same course. So I request that you, what you do, please try to pay, when you pay, pay attention, and if you don't understand, they said, of course, there are some things that you have to ask, okay? If I've not talked about something, you can ask. But if something just requires a repetition three, four times, please, I request that you visit our YouTube channel, which we are going to send you the link uh, through the WhatsApp group, and then you'll be able to follow up that, eh? that given lesson. So uh, please, I, I am emphasizing on this mostly. Yeah? Please, if you have an issue, what, please, let's keep in, keep into the lesson to make sure we learn more things. Yeah? When you get the YouTube channel, you can review the lesson to make sure that we are at the same level. Uh, members are asking, teacher, the WhatsApp number, please. You want to join the group? We are going to send you a link here. I, with my admin, we are going to send you a link in these chats. And then you'll be able to just tap on that link and you'll be joining the WhatsApp group immediately. But please, I've given you the use of the WhatsApp group. Eh? This is the use of the WhatsApp group 
to get updates in case there is any change and what, okay? All right, um, I think I've talked about this, the links of all these, please, we are going to send them. So don't worry, you don't have to worry about that. If you haven't joined, please, we are going to send you those links and then you'll be good to go. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, today, last time that we're here, we're focusing on probability and we did the, a little bit of work as far as senior theory work is concerned on probability. That's what we looked at. Now, I really hope and pray that you've answered several questions about the probability. And the, I think in the WhatsApp group, that is where we share challenges. In case you come across a question, you can ask members, how do you go about this and the other? And then I can also be there to help you out. Now, this time around in our second phase, we are looking at something else. We are moving into vectors. That's what we are going to focus on. We are focusing on vectors. And uh, I think to kickstart with, let me share with you something here that we are going to study with. And, um, okay. I believe we are now, we are all able to see the screen. Okay. Uh, we are able to see the screen. Okay, Isaac, your hand is up. Any challenge, Isaac? Yeah, sir, we cannot, uh, we are not able to like, uh, when you're on WhatsApp group, we can't be able to share any question there. You're not able to share any question? Yes, uh, the, oh. Now, the, the groups will be uh, about that. By the way, I think uh, that is because the way we handle our WhatsApp group. Uh, please, let's handle our WhatsApp group carefully. Okay? That's the reason as to why we end up restricting you from maybe posting something and so on. But usually if you have an issue, because I'm also on that same group, you can always contact the teacher and then we uh, connect up together. So don't worry about that. It will be, it is uh, sorted out. All right. So uh, get your books, your pens, and then a calculator, and then we are good to go as far as our lesson is concerned. So uh, members, um, I'm looking at the vectors. That is our topic today. And I believe all of us are able to see our screen. We are looking at vectors. Now, uh, all these topics here, members, as we look at them, there is a purpose to which they are there. There is a purpose to which we study some of these topics here. Now, when, let me give an example of, we are looking at the vectors. Why are we looking at the vectors here? Now, vectors help us to find Direction, that is one of the things that we know, to find direction. And which direction do we look at? We are looking at shortest distance at some point. You realize, let me give an example. Some of us at home, you have your bedroom here, the bathroom is here. Okay, maybe the bathroom is somewhere, but for it, uh, then uh, maybe to get here is the way you get there. But some of you take a wrong route until you come to the, to the bathroom. And yet you can even get a shorter route that will lead you to the bathroom. That's why when you make a mistake in your movement at some point, did you study vectors? It means you did study your directions so well. Now, mathematics here is going to help us solve that. That how do we ensure that we take on the right direction at the right time when we need it to. And that is why we are basically going to focus on these vectors, okay? To ensure that when we are getting to a certain place, we get there in the right direction based on the distance that we have and where we are going. So if someone gets, uh, if you try, like for example, you are going to Guru, if you're going to Guru, and then you say, ah, yeah, I don't want to go through, I, go, I don't want to go to Kampala, then I go to Chiriandongo, then I get to go. For you want to say, I want to go to first, go to Kampala, then I go to, then I go to, to, to Kenya, then I continue. You know, 
it's not that it's a wrong direction, but it's we are looking for the shortest what? Shortest distance. That is what we are looking at. So by definition, by definition, when we talk about a vector, we are talking about hmm, a quantity. I know we may look at, we may have looked at it in physics at some point, a quantity that has both direction and it has the what? The magnitude. Those are the key things. But remember, as you remember, in mathematics, we don't ask definitions. Eh? We don't ask definitions, but these definitions, we, they help us to calculate out something, okay? So we are saying the vector is basically a quantity. This quantity has both the direction and it also has the what? The magnitude. Remember, vector, we remember in, in, in mathematics, we have quantities, like we have vectors, we have scalar quantities and others. But here, the major thing is that the vector part of it. Now, I know we can all give examples of vector quantities. I, I, I don't know who, who can someone, some of us give us examples of vector quantities. In, in, give us examples of the vector quantities that we have. Examples of vector quantities by show of hands. Uh huh. Yes, Rebecca. Distance. You're saying distance? Yes. Uh huh. Another person? Jessica? Jessica? Momentum. Momentum. Okay. Another person. Uh huh. Uh, yes, Annette, Leah. Yeah. Annette. Acceleration. Acceleration. Okay. I have the accelerate acceleration. Now. That is very good. Now, in all this that we others have given us in the chat force, uh, velocity, I've seen them in our chats here, okay? So we are saying when we have those, all those quantities that we mentioned, they must be, we have the force, have the velocity, the acceleration, the momentum, and so many other things. Now, these are some of the examples of quantities that have the direction, and they also have the magnitude. Now, at some point, we are going to define what we mean by direction. We are going to start with that. Then what do we mean by magnitude, okay? But in the basic understanding, what you should know that when we are talking about a vector, there must be a direction, meaning you are heading somewhere here. And the magnitude we are looking at, the, 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 the length, Okay, if you're saying you're moving from here up to Kampala, from wherever you are, up to Kampala town, what do you do? We are looking at how much, what is the, the distance that is there and which direction you take. That's what we are basically looking at. So we are going to work from that given point. Okay, now, as we continue, how do we represent vectors? Okay, that's the other thing that we're looking at. How do we represent our vectors? Because vectors need to be represented. Now, in mathematics, by the way, we're looking at mathematics now. How do we represent our vectors? Now, we represent vectors in two forms. We have the two forms, okay? of representing our vectors. One is the graphical representation. Is the graphical representation. Now, graphically, what, what, how do we look at, how do we try to generate our vector graphically? Now we are saying graphically, a vector is represented using a straight line and an arrow on it, okay? A straight line, I, we are, please, we are taking note, a straight line. If you have a zigzag line like this, uh -uh, we, this is not a vector, okay? We are saying we have a straight line 
and a what? And an arrow. So how do you come up with that straight line? The straight line does not matter whether it is coming from up to down or whatever, as long as we are looking at a straight line. Take an example. If I come up with my straight line like this, this is my straight line. If I draw my straight line, now, then you must put the arrow. Now this arrow represents direction, okay? So that is a representation. We can tell that this is now a vector representation. Okay, so that is how we are represent. That is one way, graphically, how we are representing a vector. You can even draw it in this, this given direction. So whatever the direction, it is up to you. But the point is, we must have a straight line. Okay, this is the straight line. Okay, this is our straight line. And this is our arrow. And the arrow indicates the what? The direction. Okay, so that is how, that is the beginning point, the first representation of our our vectors. The second one, the second representation. Now, uh, basically, to talk about this, also we are saying the length of a straight line. Okay, the length of a straight line, this like the length, maybe from here up to here. If this is a, maybe two meters, that length there represents the magnitude. Okay, and the arrow. We are saying the arrow represents the what? The direction. That is how we are represent. From our definition, by the way, we are getting this from our definition. So you have your straight line having the magnitude and then the arrow right at that given point. Okay. Now, the second way is the what you call the symbolic representation. Okay. We have the symbolic what? representation we can represent our vector okay so you're saying a vector is represented using a bold letter or a letter with an arrow or a bar above it take an example that's the way you're saying if you say if you have your your if you have your 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 let me let me draw let me draw my vector here I say the straight line with an, with an arrow. Okay, I know you can draw better straight lines than me. So when you're drawing in your books, please make sure you're, you're that accurate. So we are saying, we are saying, and like if we are moving, if this is our point O and this is our point A, how are we representing this in a symbol form? We are saying this is point, you can say O A or A. Okay, let's, let's, let's see. Uh, name it in this uh, given form. I think this will be better. Then we will. Okay. If this is our A and this is our O, so to represent this in a symbol form, you say vector O A with an arrow at the top. Now, this represents a vector. It means you're talking about a vector. Now, here you may have A. Maybe something like this. This is that magnitude A. So meaning, it is not a magnitude, but if you're to represent it in a vector form, you can write it as A. Some people write it with this. I don't know if you've come across this with something at the bottom here. So this is a vector, okay? Oh, we are saying A with an arrow. This indicates that we are talking about a what? A vector. Please, when you're talking, please, uh, I'm starting this because as we start calculating and for you just say, I am moving from O to A and you don't put anything, okay? It means you're not talking about vectors. So in mathematics, wherever you see this, it means you're talking about a what? A vector, okay? So as long as we are talking about, and if you, you may have drawn something, if you draw a line in this form and you write maybe this is a o in a capital don't write again small a and o ah this is wrong okay this is wrong it has to be the capital a and then the o that will show you in that unit so that's how we represent our vectors as far as this is concerned okay that's how we are representing our vectors then 
we are saying, we are talking about how do we specify in our directions? Maybe from that point, do I have any question? If you have a question, please, you can type it and then I will be able to answer it immediately, okay? If you have a question, you raise it, you raise up your, your, your hand or you type. The best thing is typing. You can type your, your, your answer, your, your question, and then I'll be able to respond to it immediately, okay? All right, someone was saying we're not seeing this, hope you're seeing it now. Okay, then uh, we are also saying, we are saying here that when we have our, we are looking at the direction now, how do we put our direction? We call it the sign conversion. Huh? How do we specify our direction? Now we are saying the vector OA runs from O up to A. Let me represent it here. I will keep on drawing this because it is a, basically what we are talking about. So when I have vector O A, okay, it means I O A there is an arrow which is here to A. What does this mean? It means that I am moving from point O up to A, and this is our magnitude or our our maybe our our this is representing our our distance that we are moving okay now how do we we are we are saying therefore it is given a positive sign so if you're moving from from this point moving to the other next one we are saying oh a this one is equivalent to a look at this okay but how about if you are moving in a reverse direction? Say, no, 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 no. Yeah, I want to move from A and come to O. Now, if you want to move from A up to O, this means you are coming in a negative. We give it a negative sign. We give that vector a negative sign. Please take note of this. Remember this one, I repeat, from O to A, from this O up to this A, we give it a positive sign in that given direction, it is positive. Now, it is negative when you move in the opposite direction, okay? When you come to the opposite direction. So when you're moving back this side, when you move back this side, it means you're moving in a negative direction. That's what it means. Okay. So let's have these concepts in mind as we are going to work out several numbers at some even point. Okay. So take note of this and also take note of this point too. Okay. Then, so uh, that is what we've talked about about our direction. So take note of one. How do we write our, you talk about the representation. We talked about how we represent, represent vectors, okay? That is one, and we said we represent using the symbols and then the graphical representation. In the graphical, we draw a line, a line with a direction. In the symbol, we are using either A or A, we put directions, okay? That is what, how we are trying to work out this. These are the two things we will so far looked at. All right, okay, we move on. We are saying, we also have classes of vectors. We can class, we classify these vectors into different forms and they are basically three forms that represent our vectors. So our vectors are represented, uh, we are classified as column vectors, displacement vectors, and position vectors. So when someone says, write from your column vector, oh, I want a displacement vector, we need to know what does this really mean, okay? What does really, what will this one really mean? Because we are going to say, we are going to get questions, given a positive vector, 
the position vector this, given a displacement vector this, given a column vector this, we need to know how to represent them. Okay, so we are going to start with one by one, just by definition and what they are. We start with a column vector. What do we mean when we talk about a column vector? Now, and how does it come about? Yeah. Now, I don't mind about the, the, the words. There are quite many, but we, we, shall, we shall understand them slowly. Okay. Now, all of us, we drive the column vectors. We drive our column vectors. Our column vectors are derived from the equation of a straight line. And we said at some point we looked at that, I think in our form to equation of a straight line. I, we need to know that our, our mathematics keeps on recurring. Eh? So when we talk about the equation of a straight line, we learn that a point on a plane can be specified using a pair of numbers. Take an example. Let me draw it here. Maybe we can be able to view it. So when I have uh, my plane, I'm going to use this plane. If I am drawing this, if my lines are not so straight, please. Uh, I know you can make more straight lines. Eh? I, I trust you on this. So uh, if we have this, uh, they have this, we know that this is the, the y axis and this will be our x what? x axis, okay? Now, if you have points, for example, you have, this is a, let's say like we are looking, for example, a pair of numbers x and y, okay? Where x is the number of units along the x axis, for example, we can have this. If this is the number of units, maybe this is our x, okay? Then this is our y point. This is our point y. This is what we have. Okay. So meaning our coordinates here will be x, y. This is why it is. This will be our point x, y. Okay. Now, from the original, then also y is at that point from the original point. Now, the two numbers, these two numbers here that have formed when you pair them you form what we call a Cartesian coordinate. I know this is, you may not have to, I know you should have looked at this in senior, in senior one or something, but they will call that the, the Cartesian coordinates. Now the point P, for example, this point here, this point P can be represented as this, okay? We can represent it as what? As X, Y in brackets. Now, this x, y in brackets is what we are calling a column vector, okay? So our P is equal to x, y. Now, when you write your vector in this form here, we say it is a what? It is a column what? Column vector. I hope we get that clearly. When you write your your vectors in this form here of x and y with these columns here then we say we have what a column what a column vector okay any point any question here about column vectors how we write them is the point that we are we are looking at so that when you see when they say write for us a column vector you must be knowing how to write it when we say represent a column vector, we need to get to know how to do that as well. Okay. All right, so uh, this is a column vector. That's basically what it is about. Now, the next one, uh, sorry. The next one is what's called a displacement vector. A displacement vector. Now, when you talk about a displacement vector, this comes from two points. Remember in the, in the, in the other one, in the, um, in the column vector, we have one point, eh? but in the displacement, you have what? Two points, are we together? So for example, we have two points here. Point A has, of course, this is X and this is Y. Eh? 
This is X and this is Y. Okay? So we have these two points here. And if we are to represent them on a graph, this is my graph here, I've, I've quickly drawn it up, but I'm sure you can also try to uh, put it in that given form as well. So when you have your graph in that given form, let's, let's see how we came about. So you, you label this point X, X is one, this is our one, and then Y is two. So this, is, this will form your point, what? Point A, and point A has what? One, two. Then your point B is eight. This is eight for X, okay? This is eight for X. And then your Y has what? Your Y has six, okay? The Y has six. So this will form our point B as eight what? As eight, six, okay? So now from this, how do we derive the displacement vector? We are saying, we ask ourselves, if I'm at point A, we are looking at how are we moving? Here we are moving, we are looking at the motion. Okay, we are looking at the motion of our points. How are we moving from this point to this other point? So that's why we are saying here that the motion from A to B, let's look at this. How do we move from A up to B? Let's go back to our graph. If I am to move from here up to here, how many steps do I take? We take, this is one step, this is two, this is three, we have four, five, six, and then seven steps, okay? That is how I get to this point here. Then how do I move to up here? I am moving, also from here up to here for the y axis i also move this is one this is two three and then this is four now alternative that is why we are saying for us to get that movement a b the displacement a b we make we we say x one the the, the, the x two minus the x one okay then we also get the y2 minus the y1. And we shall be able to get that. And I think that's why we are saying 8 minus 1, this one is for the x, while the 6 minus 2 is for the y. And from there, so a b will be our displacement. Okay? A b will be our displacement vector. And how shall we get our displacement vector? We shall get our, as I said, x2, which is eight minus one, and then the down will be six minus the two. And then you'll be able to get the, the seven, what? Seven, four. Now, what is this seven, four? This seven, four is called a displacement vector. The eight, four is called a displacement, what? Vector. Okay, I see with Daniel. Is it Daniel? Daniel. Daniel. Yes, I see my. I see my. You have a question. Your hand is up. Yes, excuse me. I'm requesting, yes, yes. I'm requesting some clarification on, on the way you have interpreted, on the way you have interpreted that the triangle that we last started after the oh. upper sentence okay okay we want a pardon there okay uh how about uh, halima and jabel yes halima and jabel i've not got that point of x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1 okay uh -huh. I'm going to repeat that also. Uh, is it sports outreach? Please, I told you to label your devices as your names. Uh -huh. yeah. Teacher, excuse me. Is, mm. this, is this one is this one the procedure of, get, of getting displacement vector? Yes, the last please. one. Yes, is the procedure. Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, Daphne. Let me talk to Daphne. Yes, Daphne. 
Daphne, your hand is up. Okay. Uh, Joel, let me look, talk to Joel. Yes, Joel. Okay, good. Now, I, I think all, all of them are rising from uh, us repeating this. Huh? I think that's where we are. That's what we are doing. Huh? So let's look at this again. Back to the triangle. Let's get back to the triangle here. I said with the displacement, we are looking at how are you moving from one point to another? That's what we are looking at. Okay. Now, usually you have two points. This is our x1, this is our y1. This is our x1, x2, and this is our y2. Okay. Now, we are asking ourselves, how would we, are we able to move from this point here up to this given what? Up to this given point, okay. And this is the, this is the the the, the, uh, the the one that you're seeing from here up to here. It's like the displacement, okay. But remember, you have your coordinates of a, and you also have your coordinates of b, okay. Now, how are we moving up to that given point? We are saying we are moving the steps. That for me to come to this point, remember, I am at this point a. For me to be able to move to this point B here, that's what we're, what, what we're asking ourselves, okay? How do I get to this B here? The displacement that we are looking at. So what I will do, it means that I am going to move certain steps from here up to here, okay? Then I'll also have to move certain steps from my point A up to this. And then from there, I'll be able to get to this given point. That's the understanding that we are getting. Now, I moved these steps here to show you easily, even without subtracting, okay? Without even subtracting, I can move even without sub the, the subtraction. So how do I get, for me to get to B, I need to first move step seven steps to this point, and then I also move four steps to the other point. That's why I said, if I am to move from here to here, remember this one here is leading us to this, okay? It's leading us to this other point. So what I'll do, I'm going to move from here. This is step one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's why I'm moving the seven steps. Then I also have my point here. Please don't look at the numbers. We are moving steps. Don't look at the numbers yet. So I'll be moving how many steps? One, two, three, four steps up to this given point. So there are four. That is how I am coming to the fact that for my displacement a b i'll have to be able to move what i'll be able to move seven four steps for me to be able to get to the point of this given a b now by calculation it's like we are saying x1 remember we have this we have this point here this x1 so we have our x1, y1, then x2, y2. So our displacement a b, our displacement a b will be, we are now subtracting. Someone was saying, aren't we getting the, oh, uh, this one here? Point from O to B minus from O to A. Okay? But the challenge will be like, where is the starting, where is the O? Where is the O? It will be, it will be the, the given point. That's why we are not bringing in this, okay? But it can also uh, be used. So we are saying from here, we are saying we are getting our direction of A, uh, sorry, of the, the coordinates of uh, X2, which is eight minus the one. And also we are getting the six minus, minus the two. And this is how we are also coming to seven, what? Seven, four. So the two, there are two means that we can get to this. You can use this calculation or you can use these movements here. The movements are going to give you, this is direct understanding that you can easily or directly uh, to move that, okay? 
Then, um, someone is asking, does the displacement affect the direction? No, you still move the same direction. Okay, you, you'll keep on moving the same direction. So literally, we shall remain in our same direction. Maybe we shall work out examples at some point and then we'll be able to see how we can be able to get more and more displacement. But usually displacements, you have two, three, but most cases the two. I can also get the three as well. I think, and, and that is how the, the, this point came to, uh, how that's how we came to that this given point. So there are two means, there are two ways that I'm putting up. You can either just move or you can do the calculation as it is like this. Now moving means that you have to draw that, to draw the X, Y, and then you show those Z points and then you explain how you are coming to this, but you can come to it. My point was to emphasize to you that you can come to this without necessarily calculating this, okay? By moving those given steps. Okay. Um, next, the last one is the position vector. The last one is the position vector. Now, when we talk about the position vector, when we talk about the position vector, here now, we are still talking about the displacement, but here we are coming from our original points, okay? Here we are coming from the original point. For example, if we have our, our graph, we are coming up with, if this is our y and this is our x. Here we are coming from our original point O. Okay? This is our original point. But wherever we are heading to, to any other point, maybe if this is our P, yeah? So we talk about position vectors when we are moving from the original point. But with the displacement, most cases you do not move. You can start from A can be somewhere else, be somewhere else. But here we are talking about the original point yeah? and the original point is always zero, zero. That's when we talk about the position vectors. So at any point P, the corresponding vector OP. So meaning our OP, if you have your vector OP, okay? This is now what we call the what? The position vector from the original point, okay? So our origin from our original point, our position vector P, OP will be that X, X, Y. Yeah, that is what it will be from the original point here. That is the, the, the focus that you put on. The direction you take from the original point. While the other one, we are just talking from any other two points. From any two points, it is okay. But here we talk about all represents that you're coming from the original point. That is what it represents. I think that's why you see someone was saying in the previous one, why don't we say OB minus OA? But remember, we are not coming from the what? From the original point is zero, zero. That is the reason as to why. When you use it, you're going to come up with the result. Because this one indicates that if you're saying OB, OB means that you are getting uh, X minus zero, Y minus zero. That is what it means. And you'll end up with what? With X, Y. That, that's, that's the other direction you're talking. So in most cases, when you talk about this, it means that you are coming from the original what? original point. Okay, that's it about the, the three type of, the, 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 three, the three categories that we have. Okay, we talked about the column, how we generate the column vector, the displacement, and then the position, the position vector. But by the, this is a, please get used to these terms because we are going to carry on calculations and we will need the, this knowledge here so, so much. Eh? We shall need it so, so much. Now, um, another thing as we, we are almost coming, we have about 10, 10 more minutes to, to close the class. Now, uh, let me talk about a midpoint of a, a midpoint of a vector, a midpoint, the middle point of a vector, okay? So when you have a vector like maybe A and you have O here and we are looking at the middle point of a given vector, how do we calculate it? Or how do we come to that? Now, we are considering 
a vector which is this is a position vector OA and then OB with their position vectors as this. Huh? So meaning OA has is taken by A, which is X1, Y1, and then OB has position vector X2, Y2. Take note of this. Huh? This is equivalent to O B, while this one is equivalent to O A. Okay. With this, huh? it's the same as that. Now, if you have those two and you need to find out their midpoint, this graphic I represent them. Please don't worry, these notes I'm going to upload them in the, in the Google Classroom and you'll be able to download and then go through them. So if you if I move to the next slide very fast, please, uh, you don't have to worry about it. So this is what we are meaning. So we are saying from our original point O to A, we have X1, Y1 together. Then, and this is it, the vector A on it. Then from O up to B, we have our X2, Y2 represented by this other position vector, this vector B, okay? Now, we need the midpoint of AB. This is what we need. If we are to get a midpoint, now usually this midpoint here, comes is still, we still connect it to the one, we still connect it to our original point O, okay? So meaning it can be OM, okay? It can be OM, but it is our middle point. So how do we engage to get our middle point there? So what we do, the middle point AB, can you call it M, eh? this is equal to, this is equal to M. The middle point is given by x2 my x2 plus x1 out of two, then also y2 plus y1 out of two. Someone might ask, why don't I say y1 plus y2? It's the same thing. Eh? <laughs> huh? This can be also x2 plus, eh? sorry, x1 plus x2. Eh? It's the same thing. When you're adding, it's the same, but when you're subtracting, it's not the same. Eh? Eh, or uh, then y2. This is the starting, this is what you have, okay? Remember, it is a half of the two vectors. So that's why we are saying, remember the comma means that this will be, remember you're going to get two vectors. We are going to get X and then Y. That's why we are separating them in this given form. So therefore, the position vector OM, okay? Our position vector OM, like from O up to M here, okay? Of the midpoint of the of the midpoint of vector a b will now be given by mm -hmm. please let's pay a bit of close attention here let's pay close attention so we can have we can have o m remember what we have written here but what we've written here we are just transferring it into x two plus x one out of two. Remember, we are writing it in form. Then we say y2 plus y1 out of 2. This is in what? In that given vector form. Eh? That's what we are having here. We've not changed anything. Okay? So once you have this, when you bring the, 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 the two outside, when you bring the two outside, it becomes a half. Okay? When you bring when you bring our two, when you bring the two outs out of these brackets here, we get a half, and inside we shall remain with x two plus x one. Then here down we also remain with y two minus y two. Remember, it is a midpoint, meaning it is a half of something. Okay? I know whether we get that. Okay, it is a half of something. So literally, when you simplify it, when you simplify this one here. You can have a half x2 y2 plus a half x1 y2. What are we doing? Or we are generating the formula. Yeah? We are generating the formula for for midpoint. That's what we are doing. One might be asking, what are we doing? We are generating the formula for the midpoint. So that when you are get to ask to get the midpoint. Just put in the formula and then you get your answer. But we need to know how the 
oral formula is coming about. So we shall have a half of this x2, y2, and also a half of x1, y1. But remember, our x, x2, y2, we given it as b. And our x1, y1 is given as what? As position vector, as vector a. So when you do the substitution here, when you do the substitution, you shall get a half b plus a half what? Half a. So therefore, if you are to get your final formula, it will always be O A O M O M. Remember, it is the what? It's the midpoint. It will be a half of a half b plus what? A half b plus what? Plus a. This is how we generate our midpoint of a of a vector that we may be having. I repeat, this is where we started from. Okay, I repeat. We first had our we had our our two vectors O A and then O B O A and then O B. So A was given by this x one y one and then B was given by x two y two. So when you put them on a graphical represent, usually the graphical representation brings out a clear picture of what you're calculating. Okay, so when we represent it graphically, this is our OA represented by this, and then OB represented by, by this other. Okay, so we have those two. So what are we doing now? We are saying for the midpoint OM, we are saying it is X2 plus X1 out of two. Out of two means it is, you, you, you reduce, it is like a half of it, eh? you're dividing it into two. So that's how we are coming to, to this. So therefore, when you simplify, what we are doing, what we are all doing here is just to simplify, to make sure there are no repetitions for whatever reasons. So therefore, if you're to get a midpoint, it is basically a half of the vector of B added to vector of A, and then divide it by two, and you'll be able to come up with your midpoint. Okay, I think that is clear. Uh, master should do the vector a b b in bracket. Yes, it is in brackets. Huh? I think we've seen that it's in brackets. Okay, it's in brackets. Because look here, this is how it comes about. When you pull this half outside, eh? meaning the half is taking on b and it's also taking on what a. So that's why you are saying it is a half into brackets. Okay, a half into brackets b plus what plus a, but don't forget to write, to write the vector signs as well. Okay, good. I think we are moving, we are moving, we are moving. I, our time is that running down, but let's finally, I know you're going to work out some bit of work, but please go through this and then you'll be able to. Operations on vectors, what can we do with vectors? You can add, you can subtract, you can multiply vectors. How do we do that? Okay, that's the, the, the only thing. Adding, subtracting, multiplying of the vectors. What do you do when you are adding vectors? So when you are adding vectors, it is simple. If you have vector A and you have your vector B, and you say what is A plus B, okay? Vector A plus B, this is equivalent to, you subtract the, sorry, you add the, X alone, and then so add the Y alone. And you'll get your answer. So meaning A plus B will be X1 plus X2. Then the downer will be Y1 plus the, the Y2. And your answer will be good from there. I think that is straightforward. Eh? This is what we have. Our X1 plus X2, and then y, Y1 plus Y2. And you'll get your answer. That's how you simply add. Then in the subtraction, you do the same thing, okay? If you are subtracting, if we say B minus A, vector B minus A, this is equivalent to saying B is this. So you say X2 minus X1, then Y2 minus Y1, and you get your answer, okay? So that's how you try to carry on the, the calculation. So the subtraction, it's the same thing, okay? 
if it is depending, please, if they say A minus B, it's not the same as B minus A. Please take note of this. These are different things. So this is A minus B, but if it was B minus A, it will be X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1. And then you come up with your answer there. Okay. All right. Then finally, how do you do this, uh, the multiplication? Now, multiplication, usually we multiply vectors by scalar quantities. Yeah. Remember, scalar quantities are just single values. Okay. They're usually single values. It's always a single value because for them, they, they are not like uh, vectors that have uh, direction and the, uh, and the magnitude. Okay. So this is what we have. So A, if we have our A as this is our vector A and the K is the scalar quantity, you just multiply. So if, you, if they tell you to find a K, it will be the same as saying uh, X1, Y1 times K. Okay, so meaning you're going to multiply this by this and also this by the other one. Okay, so that's what we shall be getting. So you say K A will be K into X1, Y, one. So can a vector be a negative? Yes, it can be. If you're moving in the opposite direction. I, I think we started with saying that. Uh, that is from Chirabo. Can a vector be a negative? Yes, it can be. Okay. As when you're moving in the what? In the opposite direction, you can get a uh, negative out of it. So when you multiply this, when you multiply the two, you get kx, kx1, oh, uh, down is ky1 in a vector form. Dear members, I think unless otherwise, this is a, something, this is something you'll work out. It is simple, huh? we have vector A, we have vector B. Someone was asking, can it be a negative? Yes, I have a negative here already. Okay. Meaning you're moving in the opposite direction. That's what the interpretation we get. Huh? It's like you're, you're, you're in reverse directions. That's what you're doing. Okay. So when you have these two, I think you can easily find it. So this is our assignment now. This example is going to be our assignment because I think our time is fast spent. So I want you to work out this and uh, you, 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 you post it in the, I'm going to repost it in the Google Classroom. Um, uh, give us an example using the scalar quantity in multiplication. I think it is here. You see when, like for example, when you have 4A, 4, 4A, it means it A is a, 4 is a what? Is a scalar. So what do you do? It is a 4 into A, which is 3 what? 3, 2. So meaning you're going to get, four times three, four times two, okay? And you'll get your answer as total eight. Please don't reduce these values. Some of you are too wise. I don't know whether it is too wise or too what. Don't reduce these ones. These are not fractions. There is that mistake that he learners always do. Please don't reduce them. So you are going to work out for me this exercise. I'm going to put it in the book classroom and then you try to work out based on what you have looked at. Can I ask a few questions before we close? Any questions? I hope. So next time we are going to keep on uh, learning more about the vectors so that we uh, engage very well. Any question, any question that is there? Eh, no question. Okay. Um, blessing, let, let me answer just blessing, 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 blessing. Okay, so I wanted to ask about the corrections of probability. Mm. The correction of probability, will we find them in the Google Classroom? The other ones we did. I think we did the class the corrections last time, did we? But we never finished them. Oh, you never finished. Okay, I'm going to get them and then I place them there for you. If okay, you thank you, sir. You're, you're welcome, please. Um, also, uh, Charles, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Okay, Andrew is not there. Uh, Lydia, I'm clo we are closing the lesson. Lydia, teacher, I wanted to ask like, 
Me, I, I just joined the, the lessons this, this second phase. So I wanted to know if the work for probability is also in the YouTube channel. Yes, 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 yes. It is there on the YouTube channel. The one, the one for probability, it's there. But we are okay, going to send you the link. Huh? Oh, okay, please. Mm, thank you, Linda. Linda, then. Yes, Linda. Uh, Linda, are you there? No, Linda is not there. Finally, Joel. Finally, Joel. Yes. Pardon? Pardon? I'm not getting there. You start with the beginning. I'm not, we are missing out a point there. Uh, on the midpoint. Oh, on the midpoint, yeah, yes. From the real, real past, from then I go on and on and on. And if this is correct, it's the past and by the time. Okay, your, your, your network is not so clear, but uh, the point of the midpoint, I say that the method I, I was driving, I was driving the final formula. Okay, I was driving the formula for final formula. But if you are told to get the midpoint, you're supposed to use this, uh, this formula directly. You don't go back into the other working. Uh, if I got your answer, your question clear. Use this one here, and then you get the midpoint directly. Okay, um, members, I think our time is first spent. And uh, Mr. Dumba, Stephen, I don't know if you have something to put across before we close the lesson. No, I don't have anything for now. Thank you so much for your lesson. Okay, um, Mr. Dumba, I don't know if you, you, you can easily share some link there for the Google Classroom. I don't have it easily here in the chat before we close. Okay, let me do that right now. Okay, thank you. So, um, members, the link is going to be sent there, and then you'll be able to work it out and see. Okay, Linda has insisted. Linda, you're going to ask, and then you close with the prayer afterwards. Linda. Linda. Yes. 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 Your hand is up. Yes, I was asking about the WhatsApp number. Okay, now the, the link is going to be sent to check the chats shortly. After that, you tap on those links for your class and then you'll be good to go. They, usually we don't give numbers, we give a link and that link takes you directly to the, to the WhatsApp, to WhatsApp group. Okay. Okay. okay, please. Okay, otherwise I want to say thank you for attending. I'm sure you've been attentive and everything has moved on so well. And uh, if you have anything, please just share in that uh, WhatsApp group, or you can even send uh, your, your in the Google Classroom, you can write a comment, and then we'll be able to get a response. Okay. I sent the link in the chat. I hope they can see that. Members, have you seen the link? I think you can see it. Okay. Wait, I know I'm not seeing it. All right. So uh, thank you so much for attending and I want to wish you a nice weekend okay. and the days to come that you'll be there. Okay, the link is right there. The link is Thumbs right up. there. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've just seen it, we've seen it. So uh, please, you go to that site, www.nscsu.org, then you see that portion of join classroom. This one, this is, this is link. Eh? So you'll go there and then say join classroom and then or join WhatsApp group and you'll be good to go. Thank you so much and I wish you a good day and weekend. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, and so on. Yes, teacher, I'm about the table.
Mm. My wife was going to the Ademi. Like we joined, if you look at the timetable, it shows that we are supposed to join at 10. And when we join, we wait up to like like 10 30 that is when the teacher comes in i don't know whether they have changed the timetable or the timetable is just as they have given for us um timetable changed we are using a new timetable i have the timetable but it shows that we are supposed to join at the 10 but that's the teacher an at the 10 30. The, that's an old timetable. The new timetable shows we, we are start we started this lesson at half past ten. So you go to the link we have shared in the in the chat. You'll find the timetable. You'll find the nine class Google class codes and the new Zoom links, please. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. But have you seen the link in the chat? Yes. So I'm just keeping it for just a minute, then, then, then I, we shall end the lesson. Okay, so members, uh, please, I'm going to post that uh, work as well, and you'll be able to check. You work out that simple number. I'm going to add on another one as well. Eh? Please work it out. It's very simple. If you follow those uh, notes as well. Eh?